And finally, uh, let's take a look at uh, the move which declines the gambit. Uh, bishop to b6. Um, I think this is uh, maybe the best move to play. Not necessarily uh, in the sense of uh, that this is a move which objectively gives you the best position. Um, however, that's a move which easier to play with black. Um, fortunately, if you're going to play the, the Evans Gaming on the white side, in our uh, over-materialistic world, almost nobody going to decline the pawn. Uh, everybody will take the pawn on b4, and playing against this is easier. Um, you, 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 almost everyone loves to attack, sacrifice, uh, having initiative. Playing with initiative is easier. Um, uh, so, and people don't realize that playing with extra material under attack is harder. So, therefore, objectively, almost like regardless of your style, uh, moving bishop away uh, to b6 is just easier to play. Um, it's interesting that Viktor Korchnoi, who for years and years had the reputation of a great uh, defending player who loved to take material and who was very successful with that, um, in later stages of his career wrote in his book of selected games that it almost like he tried to play up to reputation. Like, I had this reputation, I felt like I have to live up to this reputation. But he's, he pretty much said what uh, I just said. And, uh, uh, in a matter of fact, I'm saying that because I read it in his book. And, uh, and he just confirmed uh, what I thought before. That uh, playing Def in defense, even when you have extra material against somebody's initiative, objectively is harder. Okay, let's move on. So, after bishop b6, the most aggressive move is a4, um, obviously threatening a5. Now black has two moves, a6 and a5. We'll start with um, a6. Um, here uh, we'll follow the game of uh, American uh, I am Mackenzie Molnar. Uh, he played knight c3. Actually, he had a couple of games with, in this position. He's uh, a big expert in uh, Evans Gamut and won quite a uh, few games in this opening. Um, uh, in one of his games, uh, Black played uh, d6 and um, now Knight d5, bishop a7, uh, d3, uh, followed by either bishop g5 or bishop e3, um, is a way to go. So, white just has a little bit better position. Um, and uh, then the most natural move is knight f6, in which case uh, Molnar played castles in one of his games, uh, black played d6, knight d5, um, and his opponent, uh, Russian Grandmaster Evgeny Romanov, uh, played in this position castles, um, knight takes b6, c takes b6, d3. Uh, black, white has a bishop pair, uh, black tries to take this pawn, but white almost instantly wins this pawn back, uh, bishop e3, Black could try to save this pawn by playing knight d7. However, uh, after this, uh, white, Black will have hard time developing his pieces. Uh, white, white, for example, can continue with c3 and d4, uh, for example. So c3 and d4 is one of the possible plans. Um, uh, in the game, uh, Black played bishop g4, and after Bishop takes b6, um, white got advantage and uh, eventually won the game. I I'll show you just a uh, few more moves because it featured a very nice tactical shot. Here white played bishop d5 and black uh, blundered with uh, 
knight takes d5, e takes d5, knight e7, and now knight takes e5 um, was a nice uh, tactical shot. Uh, um, okay, the reason I paused because um, I thought that. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, my, my bad. Um, I made a mistake when I followed the game. Uh, actually, white took on b6 with a rook. Um, so, queen d7, and now... By the way, taking with the bishop would, wouldn't be worse. And and now this is what happened. Uh, knight e7, uh, knight takes e5, d takes e5, queen takes h5, and white just had a better end game, which he eventually won. Um, in another uh, one of uh, Molnar's game, uh, his opponent, um, after knight d5, played uh, bishop to a7 right away instead of castles. Um, and here, uh, the best way for white to play is continue playing aggressively. To play b5, um, black most likely will play uh, knight a5. By the way, I just would like to show right away that uh, this doesn't, um, this a file doesn't quite work for uh, black because he he doesn't have time uh, to do this because he wins the rook but he loses a knight so white wins two pieces for the rook so um, probably black will play knight a5 white will play bishop a2 this knight on a5 is bad uh, white is going to play d3 followed by bishop g5 and just in case taking this pawn on e4 is also very dangerous white can play something like queen e2, knight f6, uh, d4 white uh, wins um, the pawn back uh, with, uh, with a very good game uh, so um, that's uh, about a6 and now we need to go back and look uh, after a4 uh, black also can play a5 uh, in this case we're going to follow um, one, another Kasparov's game his game against Jaron Pickett um, from 1995 uh, I guess this was a very productive year for Gary Kasparov and uh, Evans Gambit um, knight, black played knight d4 White played knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, c3, bishop b6, d4, um, e takes d4, and for uh, those of you who already uh, watched this video and understands the ideas, next move wouldn't be surprising. White is very happy to give black this pawn, and taking this pawn is very dangerous for black. Um, in the game, Pickett played knight e7, but if black plays d takes e3, after knight takes e3, for example, knight e7, bishop g5, um, this pen is extremely difficult um, to handle. Um, here is a sample line. For example, let's say black castles, white plays knight d5, and black plays bishop c5, and white plays queen h5 and black's position is already lost now a very nice sacrifice knight f6 check pawn checks bishop checks and between queen g5 check and queen h6 um, black is dead lost uh, i don't even mention that this bishop is hanging we we don't care about this bishop in situation when we are about to give a checkmate or win a queen um, so uh, this is not good for black um, and uh, if uh, instead of uh, d, d takes c3 he plays knight e7 this is exactly the move which was chosen by Pickett then white plays bishop g5 black played h6 um, and now Gary took on e7 uh, got a good game and eventually won um, but um, I would suggest playing bishop h4. Uh, I, I just will show you some lines. Once again, uh, taking on c3 would lead to similar variation we already went over. 
uh, it's true that um, black um, at some point uh, can play g5 um, but in this particular case uh, black's king's position is so weak that this looks incredibly dangerous um, it is uh, sometimes possible move in different situations but here black king is so bad white has a huge advantage uh, possible continuation could be knight f6 check um, if king g7 for example knight h5 check and then uh, bishop moves away um, and if black plays king h8 uh, white can proceed with queen h5 um, game is essentially over um, white is threatening to check on h6 with a checkmate and uh, knight g8 um, could be followed by knight checks g8 king checks g8 check very nice check pawn is pinned uh, here check here bishop checks g5 it always enjoyable to show variations like this um, game is over so uh, after bishop h4 uh, black's move black's best move is probably castle and then we can check on d4 and let's say black plays d6 knight c3 uh, threatening knight d5 so let's say he plays bishop e6 we're gonna play knight d5 anyway bishop checks d5 now if we take on d5 now here g5 is actually fine uh, after something like bishop g3, knight takes d5, e takes d5, queen f6, black is the one who has a better position. We have no pieces to attack black's king, and meanwhile we're going to lose this pawn on d4. So this is a good example when g5 is actually good. So, in anticipation of this move g5, we should take on e7, queen takes e7, play bishop takes d5, targeting... Uh, this pawn on b7 so let's say black plays rook b8 um, and uh, this is uh, an interesting position the reason I bring this position up to illustrate another uh, chess concept um, many of you are aware of drawish tendencies of opposite color bishops you see those bishops are of opposite color and it's true that the majority of games with those pieces on the board, only those pieces on the board, end up in the draw, in the end game. However, in the middle game, if you have initiative, and especially if you have an attack, opposite color bishops help you big time to develop your initiative. In this particular case, white has this beautiful rook lift, rook to a3. So we trans uh, transfer our rook to the king side very quickly like for example if he will play move like rook f8 after rook f3 sorry man you gotta play back because f7 is under attack there is no better move than rook f8 uh, and even if he doesn't do that let's say he plays queen f6 which is probably his best move uh, we're gonna play rook to d3 um, and uh, what's he gonna do now it's amazing situation when in the middle game black has hard time finding a move let's see the rook on f8 cannot move because if it does we already know what happens we just play rook f3 and win the pawn on f7 bishop takes f7 check um, rook on b8 cannot move because the pawn on b7 is under attack bishop on b6 has only one square a7 which is obviously a terrible square so queen is the only piece which can move around and uh, one piece cannot play plus there are not that many good squares for the queen and so we can slowly improve our position uh, for example we can play something like queen d2 rook c1 putting rook on the open file maybe we can play a four later king h1 e5 and so forth so much better position for white um, though without my explanation you probably wouldn't see that you would think oh you know what possibly can be opposite color bishops looks like a draw but now you can see very good position for white good attacking chances all right so finally we're done with the Devon's gambit and we can move to two nice defense